Hello everybody, I got a great question to you. What do you get when you mix a mango and a banana? You get a bango. That's not some instrument. That's a mixture between a banana and a mango, right? A bango. Well, there's no such thing as a mixture of a banana and a mango. There aren't even any mangoes that taste like bananas. But through cross-pollination, there are many different fruits in nature where they do things like that. One of them is known as a pluot. And there's a whole bunch of other different types of fruits that they combine together and they created a new fruit. How about an apple and a mango? What would that be called? A, ma a maple? <laughs> a maple, yes. So, uh, so far, mangoes have not been cross-pollinated with uh, another close species to create a new food. However, that has changed. A few days ago, I was watching a video with Dr. Richard Campbell, who is one of the experts uh, of growing mangoes here in the United States, if not around the world. And he was talking about a wango. A wango. What's a wango? Well, Dr. Richard Campbell has a new YouTube page. And on his new YouTube page, the first video he posted was about this wango. If you are into growing mangoes or eating mangoes or anything, you know who Dr. Richard Campbell is? And uh, he just has so much great information. And all over the internet are videos with this man teaching people how to prune mango trees, people te teaching people how to grow short mango trees, and, and, and just getting the best varieties of mangoes. He's an amazing man. But now he's going to have his own YouTube channel, so you don't have to go searching all over YouTube. You go right to his channel. And he just recently posted this video a few days ago talking about what he has created a wango. Not just one of them, but there are two of them. Wango number one and Wango number two. And here he is with this video from his website, uh, from his YouTube page with him and his son talking about the Wango. After this video, I'm going to interview him because I was so excited about this. I had to go down and meet with him and talk to him about why in the world would he try to make something so perfect like a mango and combine it with something else. And his answer was uh, quite epic. And we're going to be talking about that today on the show. So first, let's look at the clip of the epic moment with him and his son tasting Wango number one and Wango number two. Yes, I said Wango, silly wabbit. <laughs> we're going to check that out right now. This is Dr. Richard Campbell. Again, look him up on YouTube and you will see so much information about mangoes. You'll be... Mangoes everywhere. It's amazing. But today he's talking about the wango. Check it out. All right, Richard. Let's see how they taste it. Go ahead. It's all yours. So what we're going to do here today is we're going to taste a couple of our new interspecific hybrids. So this is really a monumental moment because what these are, are these are crosses. These two mangoes, right? Or these two fruit right here are interspecific hybrids between Mangifera indica, the common mango, and other wild species of mangoes. So first, we're going to taste uh, what we call um, Wango 1. And this mango, is this is the stage where you eat it. It is green with just a little bit of, of yellowing on it. The mango is completely fiberless, as you may be able to see. Flesh is deep orange. Chiago's going to try it, and I'm going to try it. Okay, you can see right there, deep orange flesh like that. And we think mm -hmm. this is a cross between um, Mangifera rubra petala and um, Mangifera indica diamond. It tastes kind of like a diamond. Yes. It looks like a diamond. And it also, it's a polyembryonic fruit. It has a flat seed, um, very much like a Namdak Mai in the way it is. And the flavor is excellent. Yeah, right? very good. That's what we thought at least until we get to our second mango here, <clears throat> which is Wango 2. We think this is a cross between uh, Mangifera Lorina and Mangifera, I mean, that's Wango 1. Wango one. Okay. I get it mixed up. Anyway, 
Wang, oh, yeah, that's right. This is Wango 1. This one was Wango 2. The big yeah. one is Wango 2. So Wango 1 is a cross between Mangifera um, Lorina and we think Mangifera Indica both. Um, when we first saw it, we didn't think much about it. But when we tasted it, it was a little different story. So again, fiberless mango like that. See it inside. Everybody, I'm going to stop that video there. You got to see them taste one of the Wangos. If you want to see their reaction and what they had to say about the second Wango, you can see this full video at their YouTube page. The link is below in the description. But I, when I saw this video, I was so excited to learn more about what exactly they were doing that I went and I visited Dr. Campbell and I did an interview with him about what and why he's doing this. And we're going to play that right now. And please remember to subscribe to his links below, his social media, his Facebook. And here's the interview I did with Dr. Campbell about the hybrid, hybridizing the different types of fruits, the wango or whatever they want to call it, and, uh, and what his goal is for doing that. It's a very, very uh, important information. So uh, please check it out and remember to subscribe. So... So what I do... Okay, you got you on? Yeah. Okay. So I'm always... So you, you know also one of the things that we're doing now, we're working a lot with uh, mangifera species. We, we've always been working with mangifera species. And what's really exciting about that is that's going to change the mango world as we know it. All right? That's because what we're doing is we're now... We now have really good quality crosses between Mangifera indica and Mangifera, um, different Mangifera species, right? And these are, these are super exciting, okay? This so for is, people in, in English terms, you yes. just made some videos about this recently. Right. They're technically not mangoes, they're not but mangoes. They're, they're a cross, almost like a pluot or a, exactly. something like this. So so they're, they're not necessarily naturally hybridized, this man intervention. They the will way. be, yeah, they're new fruit that have never existed before, but they're done old school so they're not gmos there's nothing they're not franken foods and all that stuff i mean we did this with cages bees and good old-fashioned nature right you know and then planting a lot of seeds now are you doing that just for the variety but also for the the resistance to disease and everything yeah so eventually what will happen is there will be a a plague in mangoes, right? It, it happens in everything. You will eventually get a, a disease that'll come in and wipe out mangoes just because yeah. we're genetically too narrow, right? Sure. So now um, you have to, it, it's really like taking the, the deck ahead of the game, shuffling the deck again, so that when, <laughs> when something changes, when, He's barking at another dog. Uh, when um, when something changes, there's gonna Junio, por favor. Junio doesn't speak English. So. <laughs> anyway, so you have to shuffle that deck to be ready to deal with that stuff when it comes. So so we're always doing all of these changes, right? Now, like now this is. Let me find one here. Like. When you ask there about these crosses, so now the one we were talking about on, okay. So we just had that on our, our YouTube video there. We were talking about Wango one and two. Yes. All right, so Wango is just uh, my son's idea behind wild mangoes by a mango. Okay, that's why it's Wango, all right. But these things will eventually have names and we will, and once we, now that we know, I mean, we just started trying these yeah. things yesterday, right? Or a couple of days yeah. ago. And so now we know these things are excellent. They have good disease resistance. Yeah. They're bearing well, but it's just a single seedling tree, right? So then, um, then we have to test the parentage so that we know what the parents are, which you it's very easy to do once you know what you caged with them, right? And so you know what to put in the analysis. So you tell, you, you, you run the DNA, but you tell the researchers, okay, this is the 
prospective parents to look for, right? Sure. So they can find it, right? So you do that, and and then I we've taken budwood. That's a that's a wango two grafted on a so piva. A wango is a wild mango. Wild mango. Oh, it's a no. It's a it's a cross. So it's one of the hybrids. So it's a cross between what we think wango two is. We think it's a cross between mangifera. Uh, Rubra petala and either Mangifera indica diamond or Mangifera indica bold. Which is technically not a mango. Those things you're measuring right. They're now not are mango. another fruit. Right. So this is technically not a mango that I'm grafting on a mango. Okay. And but they're genetically close, okay, because they're half mango. Sure. They're half and not mango. for anyone to get confused out there, but things like <laughs> pineapple pledge and mango and juicy peach that's mango, a mango. That's not like a peach and a mango mix. That's something right. different. What he's doing is like a pluot or a right. which is a mixture between certain fruits. And so now will this work? Now you're doing it with this particular wild mango. Will this crossing eventually work with with like pineapples and, and mangoes? Or is that oh no, it won't because you can't cross different. You have to stay within. The same um, species yeah within okay. within the genus right so citrus you can actually go intergeneric hybrids which is rare in plants but normally the the widest you can get is interspecific hybrids the thing to remember about mangoes is mangoes come from borneo or the highest diversity is on borneo but they stretch all the way to the foothills of the himalayas which is close to what's that 3,500 yeah. miles, something like that. Yeah. That's crazy, right? That's a long distance. It's like here to halfway across the Pacific. So the idea that all of these wild mangoes are so closely related is really just ignorant of us, right? That we're like, it's like, look, these are cr wildly different things. So that's why we did all of this caging and trying to breed these things completely blind. So all of that stuff was um, very, uh, you know, that we d we had no idea whether any of this would work, it's and so we just tried to do it, right? And and as it, that's why this has been a really exciting couple weeks. So did it actually grow into a fruit that you were tasting the other day in yeah. the video? And yeah. how long did it take to get to this stage to that stage? It's about thirty years. Thirty years. Yeah. That was thirty years. So you've been thinking about this for a long time, staying ahead of the game when the mangoes. When my when it was actually back in 1992, I went to a mango symposium in Miami, and at that mango symposium in Miami, there were some a couple researchers there that talked about the potential of these 69 species of wild mango, and I thought, huh, isn't that cool, right? And I was also young in '92, and so um, you know, you think you can change the world and all that. If, if I had to do it again. I'm way too old to do that now. So that's why, that's children. my, yeah, my kids are the future. They actually are the ones who will take this stuff and carry it on. All of these things are actually in there. And, and, and this is wonderful, by the way, and this is important stuff because, you know, we got diseases coming out and things yeah. coming out where the average mango is, is changing and things are going different. So that's important stuff. No, it, it's, it's very important. One of the things that's a real big, um, it's a real big um, disappointment to me is that the universities have not kept up with this trend. They need to because everything, if you look at the new mango, the new mango reality in Florida, it's all happening outside of the University of Florida. It's all happening on YouTube and yeah. Facebook and yep. everything else, which is understandable, but... It, keep up with it, it. They had to keep up with it, and you've got to be starting to direct people so that you understand. I mean, you know, that my dad was, was the extension agent for Florida, right? And that's what he did. He went around, and that's why he knew Lawrence Hill, and that's why he worked with them to help them grow mangoes, and da 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 da. And we still have those positions, but we aren't looking at that new reality. Like, if, you, if you're still growing mangoes and think you're going to compete with Mexico for yeah. ma growing mangoes, it's ridiculous, but you don't have to. You mean on a commercial level? Yeah. Yeah. So, but but it's like right now when we sell off the porch, all right. And what we do off this porch, there's nobody outside of this country can do this. There's no one can do this, right? I mean, we can provide 
exceptional quality eating fruit of incredible diversity on a daily basis and you can either come get it or we can deliver it to you you know who can compete with that nobody can yeah. so uh, do i care about what what's going on and and you know like the competition yeah. from offshore no yeah. absolutely not the only shame is grocery stores don't carry good mango because if they did all that would do would be good for all of us yeah. it would be good for all of us man yeah. it would be